How the fuck did this movie not do any better at the box office? Also, yes, hi, it's me. This is my face, let's move on with it. Snatched from the green place of many mothers, young Furiosa falls into the hands of a great biker horde led by the warlord Dementis. Sweeping through the wasteland, they come across the citadel presided over by the Immortan Joe. As the two tyrants fight for dominance, Furiosa soon finds herself in a non-stop battle to make her way home. And that is an extremely interesting premise that makes for one hell of an engaging movie. Now, comparisons to Fury Road were always going to be inevitable. I mean, the two movies are basically inseparable after all. But what I admire most about Furiosa is how it acts as a completely different kind of movie to Fury Road. One that never tries to imitate what already worked before. While Fury Road was a non-stop action thrill ride that featured nothing but one high-octane sequence after the other, Furiosa is more of a revenge quest that feels like a neo-western or even a biblical tale of sorts. And there are only a few sprinkles of action because the narrative itself is far more contemplative compared to something like Fury Road. So where Fury Road drops you in the middle of this wild and crazy world, Furiosa actually takes the time to flesh it out a bit. But Furiosa isn't a traditional prequel that is interested in over-explaining the world, it just happens to explore and expand upon some concepts that were merely introduced in its predecessor. And these elements only enhanced my personal experience with Fury Road. So instead of comparing and contrasting the two movies against each other, I was able to view Furiosa as a companion piece to Fury Road. Because by building on top of that film's foundation, Furiosa was able to act as an excellent addition to the Mad Max saga. The narrative is engaging, the performances are outstanding, the technical craftsmanship that is on display is really damn impressive, and the action that was present in the movie is nothing short of spectacular. And sure, the digital effects didn't always look perfect, but they still looked pretty fucking good if you ask me. I mean, it's not like any part of this movie ever looked distractingly bad, everything looks good. Besides, none of the visual effects ever detracted me from the engaging story that was being told. A story that, I should mention, was absolutely carried by the one and only Anya Taylor-Joy. Joy has been in a lot of projects lately, and while I have liked most of them, this is the first time that I've seen the actress completely lose herself in a performance. She so perfectly captured the essence of Charlie's Theron's Furiosa that I didn't even recognize Joy throughout the film. I only saw her as Furiosa. But there are plenty of other great performances featured in the film as well. Chris Hemsworth is an obvious standout, for example, and even though his character did come across as being a little over the top, or even downright silly at times, his chaotic and energetic presence did happen to work for me, even if I was a bit distracted by his nose prosthetic. Tom Burke delivered a really solid performance as a stoic and Mad Maxian kind of character. Alila Brown was fantastic as an even younger Furiosa, managing to carry most if not all of the first act of the movie on her own. 
And I really liked Lockie Hume's performance as a younger Immortan Joe, because Joe has yet to become the religious and godlike figure that we were first introduced to in Fury Road. So I really liked seeing him as a mostly regular warlord because his struggle to maintain his position as leader grounded his character a bit for me. Two rival gangs that are feuding for dominance over certain territories sounds exactly like the premise of an early Mad Max film. So if you watch these movies in chronological order, Furiosa does a good job of bridging the gap between the original Mad Max trilogy and Mad Max Fury Road. And look, I know the movie isn't perfect, there are certain story beats that could have been fleshed out a bit better, a few plot points did feel completely brushed over after all, but none of that stops Furiosa from being another glorious spectacle from the crazy mind of George Miller. One that retroactively enriches Fury Road with greater emotional heft than I ever could have possibly imagined. Because while I did enjoy Fury Road very much, I did feel a bit lost as an audience member whenever I would watch it. With no fish out of water character to cling on to, I did feel a bit left behind when trying to understand the world of the wasteland. But now I don't have that problem anymore. Thanks to this movie, I have a better understanding of the Mad Max world on top of having a better understanding of Furiosa herself. So probably more so than any of the other films, I really appreciated George Miller's world building here. To me, it really makes Fury Road feel even stronger than it already is. Once I got home from seeing Furiosa, I immediately popped on Fury Road again, and I personally thought that the two movies worked flawlessly together. So I don't know how any fan of the last Mad Max film could have any problem with this new one. Furiosa acts as a wonderful complementary film to its predecessor, and it also works as a standalone movie that can stand on its own two feet. So anyone who is unfamiliar with the Mad Max universe can hop straight into this new film and not be lost or confused at all. So it's unfortunate that the film ended up doing so poorly at the box office because Furiosa was definitely one of the best movies of the summer and is still one of the best films of the year. I would definitely love to see another installment in the Mad Max saga, especially since Miller seems interested in making one. But I doubt we'll ever actually get to see it, since these movies don't make a whole lot of money. But even if we don't get another Mad Max film in the future, I'll be happy enough just re-watching Furiosa and Fury Road back to back, over and over and over again. Because Furiosa is one of my favorite movies of the year, and it would definitely get a recommendation from me. And I appreciate anyone who took the time to hear my thoughts on this four month old movie. So, as always, thanks for watching.